Good morning and greetings in the name of the risen Christ. Let us now worship God. Please join me in the call to worship, opening hymn and opening prayer. Come, sisters and brothers, rejoice in God's glory. We give praise for God's endless love. Come, sisters and brothers, sing of God's riches. We are blessed with the gift of God's love. Come, sisters and brothers, celebrate the Spirit's calling. We give thanks for the Spirit within. Let us now pray together. Come and dwell in us, Christ Jesus. Plant a seed of love in our hearts and in our lives, that the strong root of love may grow within us. Transform each one of us. Transform this church and transform the world. In faith and love, we pray. Amen. Good morning. I want to welcome all the children to worship. Today, let's start by talking about opposites. I brought this poster here with some examples of opposites. Opposites are things like hot, cold, big, little, open, closed. Let's try some on our own. What is the opposite of night? Day. This could also be dark and light, I guess. What is the opposite of friend? It could be maybe an enemy. What is the opposite of love? Eight. Let's talk about the word love right now. Who do you love? Do you love your parents? Maybe you love your sister or brother. It could be a best friend or teachers. It's easy to love these people because they love us too. But what about people who don't show love to us? Well, Jesus wants us to love them too. He wants us to love everyone. In our Bible, Let's see what Jesus says. From the book of Matthew, chapter 5, Jesus was teaching on top of a hillside. We call this lesson that day the Sermon on the Mount. Well, in his sermon, Jesus said some things that surprised his listeners. 
Jesus said, you have heard that you should love your neighbors and hate your enemies. But I say, love your enemies. And if someone does mean and hateful things to you, pray for them. <gasps> Jesus said that we should love our enemies. That's the opposite of what we might want to do. But when we love our enemies, we are acting like children of God. We are showing what God's love is like. Well, how might we be able to show love to others, especially our enemies? Well, I asked some friends for help. I gave them some situations and they told me their responses. We talked about how Jesus wants us to love our enemies so how might we show love when someone does not want to share with you? Well, Penny said to say, come on, just share, you'll make friends. And Dylan said, maybe share something else with them. Another situation I asked was, what might you do to show love when someone hits you? Nikki, said to tell them to stop hitting me. Jocelyn said that she would go and tell her mommy that Nikki hit her. The last one I asked was, what might you do to show love when someone yells at you? Arthur says to tell the person to stop yelling. Hazel said to say something nicer to them. And Joey said to sing a song. Wow, these are all such great ideas, and I'm so glad I had so much help from my friends. I hope we can remember to love our enemies, even if it's like the opposite of what we might want to do, and even when it's so hard to. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for all the love you give to us. Thank you for the people who love us, like our family and friends. Please help us to show love to everyone, even when it might be the opposite of what we might want to do. Help us to show love, even when it is hard. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus, oh, for
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, the 12th chapter, beginning with the 17th verse. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. People ask me, Reverend Richard, why do you retire so early? There are two main reasons for that. One is my health issue. The other is the growth of my nonprofit organization. I started my nonprofit organization 17 years ago, and it grew rapidly. I'd been so represented in Boys Town, Omaha, Nebraska, to Japan, and currently more than 9,000 people are using a program in Japan. The programs include parenting, foster parents training, and behavior modification program for parents of developmentally challenged children, such as uh, autism and ADHD. We also have after school program and consultation for child care organization. I've been volunteering at Japanese child care organization ever since my high school days. We used to call these child care organizations orphanages. While I support these organizations, I saw so many tragic realities, including a baby who once came with broken bones and children suffering from the cigarette burns. I met many youth who have to have deal with the parents who came, who come after them to ask for money when they got the job. Currently, there are more than 500 residential child care organizations in Japan, and they are all packed. Sad thing is, more than 80% of the children in these agencies are abused or neglect. I was so angry at the parents when I first met the abused children. I was convinced that they, the parents were supposed to be punished. However, these abused children never talk bad about their parents. They want to go home and do it, they live with their parents again. To make things harder, many parents who abused their children were also the victim of the child abuse when themselves. The chain of violence exists. Now, unfortunately, many of the parents are stressed out and cannot think appropriately. Some are mentally challenged. Obviously, safety of the child is number one priority, but the second priority is to support parents so that they can better be better equipped. Punishment and revenge are sweet. Revenge makes us feel good. However, revenge and punishment do not solve the problem of evil acts. How can we deal with the evil? This question remained within me for a long time. Then I came to know the works of Hannah Arendt. She's a German Jewish philosopher and political scientist who escaped from Nazi-occupied Paris to the United States. She studied the cause of Jewish genocide in modern Europe 
and wrote the very important work, The Origin of Totalitarianism. Arendt was uh, selected by New York Magazine to go to Jerusalem to report a trial of SS officer Adolf Eichmann. He was tried for the genocide of the Jewish people. People expect Adolf uh, Aran to portray Adolf Eichmann as an evil person and analyze his background. However, Eichmann keep on claiming that he had just followed the order of the superior. Then Aran found out that an ordinary person can commit very serious evil acts when they stop thinking and give blind trust to certain people or totalitarian group such as the Nazi regime. She used the phrase banality of evil to describe it. Her observation and report came, became a book called Eichmann in Jerusalem. You may be also interested in the movie Hannah Arendt by Magnoretta von Trotta. Arendt pointed out, Eichmann did, cons did not consider whether the consequences were good or bad when they participate the genocide of the Jewish people. The evil is formed by ordinary people who stop thinking and follow their emotions and instinct. In our church history, Early Christian father Origen asked the same question. His question was very simple, but very, very important. Why do men sin? Origen asked this question simply to live faithful to God as much as possible. His answer to this question was very simple. Men sin because they are lazy. Facing God in daily life is very intense and hard. Men easily take his or her own way, which push them away from God. That is why we sin. Sin happens when we turn our back to God, and then evil acts follow. That means we face the danger of putting ourselves into evil when we stop thinking what God wants us to do. Now you know why the scripture today is so important for us. St. Paul wants us to do good for those who commit evil acts against us. Obviously, early church was in front of the prosecution of Roman government. He also wants us to seek not to revenge, he also wants us not to re seek revenge, since a revenge does not complete God's will. Rather, God wants us to be good to those who commit evil acts against us. We all know revenge is sweet, yet that is not what God wants us to do. As I mentioned, punishment does not solve anything regarding child abuse and neglect. So what can we do? The scripture today is hard to understand in the last part. Verse 20 said, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In all, but in doing this, you will heap burning coal on his head. Is it not a form of revenge? Historically, there have been a two major ways to explain this verse. One way, is to, one way to explain it is that we do good things to them to embarrass their evil act. Hmm. The second explanation is that St. Paul is referring an old Egyptian custom widely known at the time of placing container holding charcoal on one's head when repenting. Either way, understanding is to embarrass them to help, to repent. I think there's another way to read this verse. Putting fire on one's head reminds us the story of Pentecost. 
by helping those people who commit evil acts, we may point out Christ to save their soul. Only the Holy Spirit can help them. This may be one description of salvation from St. Paul. As I mentioned, many people who abuse the children are cornered in many ways. They may have marital problem, financial problem. Some could not deal with the children's developmentally challenged situation. They just stop thinking. If we criticize their evil acts, they may keep silent or become more defensive. They may close their heart since they just can't go any far from there. We also have to be aware that our criticism sometimes can be a revenge to make ourselves satisfied. We almost became God to punish them. That is why God doesn't want us to take revenge. We all know many parents hit or spank the kids without thinking. Some felt guilty because of that. Most of them are ordinary good people who just need help. What we need to is listen to them carefully and help them to become aware that they can change. We also have to assist them with the tool of parenting so that they can enjoy spending time with their child. I started my nonprofit organization to help and assist those who struggle with their children 17 years ago. Helping those who commit evil acts can not only transform them, but also transform their family. I knew that the Boys Town Method can help Japanese parents also. I knew prevention is a key for prevention of child abuse and the behavior modification model can encourage parents to change. However, beyond the technical method, the most important things for me was the understanding of mission of Boys Town. Father Franagan, the founder of Boys Town, once said, the work will continue, you see, whether I am there or not, because it is God's work, not mine. In Los Angeles, another priest sees the same issue from a different angle. Father Boyle of Whole Boys Industry always mentioned that their work is to help gang members to discover their own wounds. People with wounds hurt other people. Once he or she finds out about the, their own wounds and the scar, they can start from there. Blaming them never solve the problems. We need to help them to find their wounds and help them to be reborn again. We all deserve our second chance. That's why the Christ come to us. I have been criticized that my work is social work and not the work of the church. Some have told me that I better be a social worker, but I don't think so. I once asked New Testament scholar Dr. Marcus Borg about my ministry. I asked him, do you think the parents are saved when they stop abusing the child and start a new lifestyle? He smiled and answered, why not? The salvation is self-transformation. His answer convinced me to go further and I will, not, I will not stop. Let us live the word of God this week. May our Lord bless your soul. Amen. Change my heart to
Gracious God, this confusing time, we need your guidance. People are sick, we need your healing. People are lonely, we need your help. Be with us and help us to live in peace. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Let us now offer our gifts. To God. And now, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Restored. 
Go now in peace, spread the good news. May the grace of Jesus Christ, love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.